have a temple rebuilt, and and we have some people in charge of it uh, in the time of Jesus and Paul. The priests are authorities in the temple. You know, Caius, uh, uh, Caiaphas and Annas uh, mentioned in the Gospels, high priests. Uh, they're in charge of what happens to Jesus at some level. They, they get... They start this ball rolling for the crucifixion. Josephus um, uh, mentions three or four parties of the Jews, uh, and there and we all the introductory textbooks talk about these groups, and I'm going to talk about these groups. But you have to know we're talking millions of Jews, and a very very small percentage of people fit into these categories. But they're the only categories we have from the period. Uh, Josephus mentions them, so, and he's a historian, uh, Jewish historian, and trying to make Judaism make sense to a Roman audience, and he mentions these parties. And so um, you'll, you will recognize most of these names. Pharisees are famous for, <laughs> they're strict, they keep the law, they, um, they drive the speed limit, you know, and they want everybody else to, too. They're, they're actually, I, um, the sort of people we love to hate in the Gospels, uh, because they're legalistic and everything, but think what matters to you. <laughs> Whatever it is that matters to you, that you think, this, you know, we just can't give on this. Is it care for the poor? Is it, you know, uh, love for neighbor? Is it uh, moral... Uh, um, decisions around money or around sex, whatever it is that you just can't see your way to negotiating. The Pharisees had a list like that, and they were trying to be faithful. They weren't trying to be self-righteous jerks. <laughs> uh, I mean, we assume. Well, <laughs> um, except that guy that prays in the te- in the temple. I thank you that I, you didn't make me like this uh, publican that I'm standing beside. Uh, Jesus didn't like him, or, or, you know, think that he had figured this stuff out. But Pharisees. Paul is one of these guys. It's, he's, he has a law degree, basically. And, uh, they, they know what God wants because they've studied it. Not because they think they have an inside track necessarily apart from uh, Torah. They don't. They just have studied Scripture. And Jesus gets in trouble with them because he thinks he knows Torah also. And he argues with them. But he, it's sort of, again, it's an argument among people well-versed in Scripture about what God is really like. Then, um, I'm, uh, the Sadducees, we hear about these people once that I can think of, well, they're in a list of literary type people. But they're they're famous in the Gospels for not believing in the resurrection. Do you remember this? That's why they're sad, you see? (laughs) (laughs) I don't remember it. (laughs) I know it's awful. Um, They come to Jesus and they have this long list of uh, this woman who's husbands, various husbands die, and they want to know in the resurrection whose wife will she be. And it's a trick question, because they don't believe in the resurrection anyway. Um, they they had money and position, and they were generally thought by the next group of people, the Sadducees were thought to have been co-opted by Rome. They had their place in society, and it was kind of working for them. Even though somebody else ran the whole world, uh, It was kind of working for them. So then there's this group, uh, Essenes. Qumran, Dead Sea Scrolls, Essenes, uh, they're all sort of interchangeable here, we're pretty sure. Josephus calls this group Essenes, and then we dig up, or somebody finds, scrolls centuries later um, from a community outside Jerusalem. These people had left uh, the temple um, traditions behind, kind of. They left that temple cult, if you will. I don't, cult is a bad, complicated word now. But they left the temple practices behind 
because they had understood them to be so corrupt, so messed up by self-interest and um, people more interested in power and money and so on than holiness. And the Essenes were all about holiness. John the Baptist seems to have some, some things in common with this movement or with these people. I can't remember if Josephus actually connects John the Baptist to the Essenes. I don't think so. Uh, but he also leaves Jerusalem and calls people to repentance, which looks like, as Luke describes it anyway, um, not stealing, not taking what doesn't belong to you. If you're a military, not shaking down the little people and so on. He's calling people to kind of practical, moral life. John the Baptist is. Uh, so would these um, Essenes have been. And they're out there, and they're waiting for God to intervene in history, to do something big. I'm gonna, we'll talk a little bit more about that intervention in a minute. Um, the Zealots, and again, I should have probably gone back and read um, Josephus. I don't know that he has this group as a distinct party, but he mentions them. And they are, uh, for lack of a better way to put it, sort of revolutionaries. They're they, they think God's going to intervene too, but it's going to be through their military uprising or their sort of uh, guerrilla warfare. And the guy that gets um, freed in place of Jesus, you know, Barabbas, I grew up thinking he was like a, a guy who knocked off gas stations or something He was because he's a thief. Um, uh, he's a bandit. Uh, in, in another way of translating what he is, and he may be somebody like this, sort of a zealot fighter, uh, a freedom fighter, a guy who sets up a fake roadblock and then takes people for everything they're worth. Yes, a, a road bandit, but, all, but also sort of in the service of resistance to Rome. Uh, so they're zealots. And sometimes Jesus, people think this is what Jesus is up to, there's a great song in Jesus Christ Superstar where uh, Simon the Zealot, uh, not Simon Peter, I think, I don't know how that goes into play, but um, uh, he's, it, has anybody seen the new Jesus Christ Superstar? No, probably not. And it's worth seeing. I mean, it was the thing was done in the 70s, it was done again in the 90s, and there's this scene where all these, like, uh, tattooed and pierced young people are following Jesus and 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 somebody gets a whole bunch of AK-47s and starts passing them out. And Simon sings, you know, these, you've got the crowd right where you want them. They'll do whatever you want. Now let's take it to Rome. And, um, and Jesus responds, you don't understand power. You don't understand glory. Uh, and uh, rejects this kind of zealot Messianism, this kind of way of being Messiah as somebody who over, overturns Roman rule and brings the kingdom of God, the rule of God, the empire of God, <laughs> you know, uh, to earth. Jesus talks all the time about the kingdom. Uh, and lots of people nowadays think that he meant it as a, as a, as a way of taking the battle to Rome in some way, as a way of undercutting Roman authority. But he doesn't ever take up arms. It's, that, it's the best thing Christians have going for us in terms of pacifism or in terms of just war, is to just keep thinking, you know, Jesus never took up arms. It, it, um, it doesn't answer all the questions, but it's, but it's, uh, it's at least got to be in a, in a conversation about how we how we speak truth to power and how we respond to uh, oppressive power. So all these different kinds, of, a small number of people fit into those groups. Other people are basically trying to feed their families and um, sort of stay out of the way. There is a, uh, a fair amount of resistance to Rome. Um, I think I have, where's my, uh, no, I don't think I put it on here. I have a timeline for you. These are just 
Yeah, I thought maybe I had the Maccabean revolt here, but I don't. Um, these are just Roman rulers in the period that Caesar is ruling. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah